Hey guys, welcome back to Metal Tips Tricks. Today, we're gonna to make some new dies for the pipe roller. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen this pipe roller at Harbor Freight and are curious, does it work? Well, it does and it doesn't. It has a place, it's not gonna do everything, but for what I need to do is I need some specialty bending with fairly large radiuses. And this is where this will work out great. Today, I wanna to talk to you about actually making some specialty dies for this. I need to take some strap metal like this or some flat bar and I need to bend it the hard way, okay? We're not talking about bending it this way. I need to bend it this way and I need to make dies for it. The challenges to making a die come with handling this is whenever you bend steel, this side is actually going to stretch and thin out where this side is gonna thicken. And when it thickens, that's when we get into trouble. So I don't know how deep to cut the grooves in our stock to do this. So it's gonna be a trial and error. Two rollers here and one in the center. The center is actually a drive roller. We've got some 4140 chromoly here. It's not hardened. Later on, after I figure out the die, I will probably have it hardened. We'll just see how it wears. Even without it being hardened, it's gonna be better than working with cold rolled steel. So this is gonna be a fun project. Let me take this over to the bandsaw, cut it up, and then we'll put it in the lathe and start boring it out. Hey guys, before I get too far into this project, I want to give a special thanks to our sponsor of this video, Metal Supermarkets, the convenience store for metal. Because of their support, I'm able to do these videos. I also want to give a special shout out to Rick Valencia and Steve Braun, the newest franchisees of the Metal Supermarkets family. Rick's store is in Dayton, Ohio, and Steve's in Jacksonville, Florida. Go check them out. You can find more detail on their stores and the more than other 80 locations across North America by clicking on the link below or going to metalsupermarkets.com. We're over here at the Kalamazoo. I'm having some problems with this. The blade is actually slipping on the wheels. I'm not exactly sure why I think I need to rebuild this whole bandsaw. I'm starting to use some anchor lube on this. Anchor lube really does great on band saws, but remember to clear the anchor lube off of your machinery because it will rust the machine and also cause some pitting into the steel. We're over here at the lathe, we're using the three jaw chuck. The material is sticking out quite a ways and you can see I'm going all the way around to tighten it up. I want to make sure that I adequately was holding it. We're going to clean up the end of the steel first. This is actually an interesting study in surface feet per minute. You can see here at the beginning where we're at our highest surface feet per minute. And just look at how the chips are forming. They're long and stringy. We're having some problems with them. Then the color starts to change. And when we start to heat up the chip, our goal is to get to the steel to a plasticine level. Once you get it up to a certain temperature, it becomes more, what I want to say, flexible and easier to cut. And you can start to see it chip a little bit. Chips are starting to form. Now we're cooling down because the surface feet has lowered. We're getting a lot of little chips here now. The reason their chips are forming now is because the metal has become cooler, therefore it's more brittle. Not necessarily the right place to be because we actually have to use more um, energy to break a chip than we would in the plasticine level. Here we are finishing up. And we're going to come in here with a center drill. Center drills are really important. They're actually hard all the way through so they don't bend. A normal drill bit, if you look at the shaft and test it, right where you chuck into it, it's actually soft. So when you start the hole, the drill bit can actually bend and put the hole off center. So always use a centering drill. Here we go in with a 5 16 drill bit and we need to drill all the way through this. I don't know what is about four inches. What is also interesting here is we're using the full cutting edge of the drill bit and when you do that the flutes fill up completely because the chip is so large coming off the cutter. So you need to back it off quite a bit. 
And I'm also making sure that I'm getting oil all the way down the flutes to help remove the chips easier. The drill bit is not long enough for where I had it set, but I wanted to get as much grip on it as possible, so I had to reset it, put it out a little bit longer to do that last 3 8 inch of the hole. Now we're going to go into the half inch. Oh, let's change the speed, slow it down some. Now look at the size of the chips because we're only using the edge or the outer edge of the cutting surface or the cutting lip. You can see it doesn't fill up the flutes as much. I'm going to go get another drill bit. We're going to probably go to about a three quarter inch size. Again, lube it up, slow it down, start cutting. Now those are some nice curls. You can't see, but I'm actually stopping as I drill. So I drill in, you know, a quarter of an inch, stop, drill a quarter of an inch, stop a little bit. I want to keep those shavings fairly short. They're easier to clean up than long ones. Here we're coming across that same problem. I'm trying to drill a four inch deep hole with the drill bit that's only three and a half inches long. So you have to clean the flutes quite often. Now we've got the boring bar set up, checking to see how the axle, the drive axle is going to fit. Going to bore all the way through. Here we're going to clean up the shavings. I got a magnet. It makes just quick work of getting rid of these shavings. If you can see, there's a bucket right there at my feet that I just dropped the shavings into, and I can do this quite fast. The problem with shavings sticking out is if you get a long shaving coming off, it can actually whip around, grab the shavings that are stored on top of your lathe, and will throw them at you. So it's kind of a safety issue to keep it cleaned up as much as possible. Here we're going in with a snap gauge, double checking everything, going for the final cut. Had a lot of problems with vibration, a lot of harmonics, and this is just one of the problems with working with a boring bar because it sits out so far it's just kind of a, a guitar strain. And you have to find the right feeds and speeds to keep it from vibrating. I'm setting up a dial indicator so I can more accurately see how much I'm cutting on my next cut. So now I'll measure it get the numbers I need to, go in there, make a cut, test it, test it again. There we go, the axle fits in. Axle was a little bit loose, but that's okay because it is just a drive axle. It's not spinning at any high speeds. Now we're gonna set up for the drive dog. I've got my material in there. I love the six-sided material because it fits on the three-jaw chuck perfectly with a lot of torque. Also, if I need to go back to it, I've got a side one and I put it on jaw one so I can actually put it back in and be fairly accurate. Here we're setting up the compound to 60 degrees so we can recut this, readjusting. Now I'm kind of a cowboy when I do certain things, especially like this. Cowboy is another word for, well, shooting off the hip, working a little faster than I should. But I've learned out of experience that there's times to be accurate and there's times to just get it done. And this is one of those, just get it done. So there's our drive system. And this is our adjustable mandrel. And an interesting dog to drive this. It's actually used more for grinding. Uh, they're self-tightening and you can take them off really easy. Really enjoy using these. Coming in, clean off that surface. I don't have to go in all the way because later on I will actually cut a bearing where you see that I haven't finished it. So that'll all get cleaned out later. I'm actually just cleaning up the surface so I can put a dial indicator against it later if I need to. Now we're going to do the outer diameter. It's not accurate. We're just trying to get the rust cleaned off and just get it to look pretty because again, we're going to have to put this back into the four jaw chuck and we're going to have to turn it both ways. This is the challenge. You need to have an accurate outside surface so when you flip it around on the four jaw, you can actually measure it accurately and have it lined up so the bearings well are concentric with each other. 
Now we're just kind of doing an eyeball. Oh, one at a time. Rushing a little bit fast. We forgot to uh, set up my material here. This one I really fought. It was kind of interesting. It took me a lot longer than it should have. It probably took me about four minutes to line this up. Um, I was overthinking how to line up the material and was just fighting it, but eventually got it. Now we're just kind of doing a rough diameter, and I need to get the depth of this, and that's what I'm trying to set up here. Set up the dial indicator. I know the width of my bearing. I just have to go in that same depth. Now I've got a shoulder, I can switch the dial indicator around and now I can test my depth. I'm going to make one cut, find out my exact diameter, bring it out, measure it, subtract the difference, make the cut, fit the bearing. Now this is one of those where I just never have trusted this lathe. I'm having some problems with it. The compound needs to be rebuilt, I just haven't taken the time to do it. I need to because it probably saves me a lot more time because I'm not able to trust its cuts. Even with the dial indicator on there, it is not consistent. And I'm not exactly sure why, except that it was scraped in by somebody in China and didn't know what they were doing. Now here we go, we just keep testing the bearing, keep sneaking up on it. Now I don't need to do a press fit here. I actually want a loose fit because I want to be able to take these bearings in and out so I can put them on the other rollers. If I was to do a press fit, I'd probably set up for this diameter bearing about a one thousandth to a thousandth and a half press fit. Now we're gonna set up for the groove. This is the profile that we need to put the metal in. I've got an eighth inch wide grooving tool right now. And we are due to rebuild this tool. Actually, we're due to throw this one away and make a whole new one. I'm planning on, well, I'm actually working on a new design right now to make this work better. I built this one special for one project. That's why it sticks out so far. I had to fit into a certain area, but it's not adequate. It causes me a lot of headaches because of harmonic vibrations. So I do have plans to make another one. Again, whenever you're doing a cutoff like this, oil. Did I say that? Put a lot of oil in there. Just keep it going. And we've got a different perspective. You can see we're getting a nice small chip. I can't get a bigger chip than that right now because of, you know, I'm going steel against steel. Just a, it's not like using carbide where I get a better chip. You can also see that I have a bull nose live center on here. I had to do that also to help absorb some of the vibrations because the metal is sticking out quite a ways from the chuck. And I had to just keep working this. This probably took me a good hour to get that groove cut correctly and I didn't want to show you everything. Fitting the steel in there, I just kept working it and working it. Eventually I got it correct. Remember I had to do that three times. Now we're going to assemble this so you can see how it works. One of the problems I had is I've got the groove off to the side and I did that for a reason so I could put other size grooves onto these wheels so they'll be very multifunctional. But with the groove off to the side, it twists the whole machine. So the top feed roller, when it comes down, it actually twists over and binds up on the side. And that's, you know, it was built correct if your dies are in the center. Okay, so if your dies like the pipe dies, everything's in the center, it works great. But when they're putting off the side, you're twisting all the forces and it does cause some problems. And there's going to be some modifications done to this particular pipe roller, uh, but I'm not going to do a video on that. It's not that important. I just have to get that top lined up a little bit. So let's put some metal in here. Let's do some bending.
So there we go, a perfectly bent radius. Well, relative is the term here. Um, I think it worked out really, really well. Some of the things I also did is I tested this earlier on some thicker material. One of the challenges I had with that thicker material is it took so much pressure to get it to bend it was actually mushrooming out this edge and making it too wide for the grooves and this was one of the things I was concerned about. But with that being said, it's worked out really, really great. If you guys like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Also share with your friends on Facebook. And until next time, go out in your shop and build something cool. Thanks.